Chuck, good to yes. see you. Yes, good to see you always. Thanks for showing up for these these little explainer videos. Uh, well, thanks for doing them. You know, you know, I, you know how I come up with them. They're like things that people know about, but they don't know as much as they think they should know or might want to know after they learned all they could know. That was very Dr. Susie in that movie. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I think I know enough about this. And then you realize this stuff you didn't know. And oh my gosh, I'm glad I learned it. So I'm making hey, a judgment there. That there's, there's nothing wrong here. with going in depth. It's in depth, total you in know? depth. So this Yellow. one is <laughs> something very simple. The shape of craters. Shape of craters. Yeah. You have a, look right. at a picture of the moon, any photograph of the moon, right. what shape are the craters? Well, they're all circle, concave little circles. They're, they're perfect circles. Yeah. Every single one of them. The big ones, the little ones, the medium ones, they are perfect circles. Okay? So, Let this... me guess. Let me guess. Aliens, just like <laughs> on Earth, the same way they make the crop circles. <laughs> they make moon circles. That's how they make the moon circles. <laughs> moon circles. They're, so, yeah, here's the thing. It's interesting that as humans, if there's something scientists don't understand, people rapidly just go to God or aliens. As, well, that's why <laughs> they, got the, they got the explanation for why. All right. It turned out it was a mystery why all craters are perfect circles for the longest time. It was a mystery until about 100 years ago. Okay. And let me tell you why it was a mystery. All right. So... Your first thought is, well, the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. Maybe it's getting slammed by meteors. Right. Okay. But is every meteor coming straight, straight. down at a 90 degree angle so that the explode the, when it hits, it makes a per is that is, surely some of them are at an angle. Right. You'd expect some craters to be elongated. Right. And you'd have all sort of shapes of, from circle to very uh, right. very flattened circles. You'd expect that. Some and, of them would be divots, like a like the when you swing a golf, you know, it'd just be like a. Oh, okay. Where, you mean where it came in on the angle? On the angle from and with the with the with the because you'd have a the slope would be different on one side than the other. Then on right? the other because right. it came slid in. It slid in. So you'd expect that, and it is nowhere to be found on the moon. So this energized the geologists because we know that the dark areas of the moon is where lava has once flowed. Okay. Oh, cool. I think they call it basalt. <clears throat> it's salt. dark and it's lava fields. All right. And by the way, the Apollo astronauts aimed for those places because they're flat. <laughs> if you're right. going to go a quarter million mile and land sideways on, and fall over, that's it. All right. So they found the flattest areas. And those are called seas. These are um, before people knew that the moon didn't have weather like we have or oceans. These large flat areas were called seas, the Sea of Tranquility. Okay, that's where it gets its name. Nice. Um, and all the seas were named after psychological states or physiological states. So there's a sea of fecundity. There's a sea. Oh, <laughs> all right. right. Yeah, yeah, right. So there's yes. a, anyway, but so that they're flat because lava in liquid state flattens out, right? There you go. Okay. All right. So wherever there was a crater, it was round. So the geologist said, it's probably not these uh, asteroids because they'd have to all come in perpendicular. They're probably all volcanic craters because volcanic craters, you punch up, it makes a hole. The hole is a circle. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, you can, you can pull that off. So that's, that's how it stood for the longest while until people saw craters on top of places where it didn't look like lava had flowed. Right. Okay, so how are you going to have a crater and no lava signature anywhere near it? What's up with that? And so this was a conundrum, okay? I have a book from 1890, and it says, um, believed by many to be volcanic in origin, uh, perhaps they're actually of uh, asteroid impacts. We are not sure. Okay. It's, by the way, it was that way for most of the 20th century until computers came along and you could simulate impacts. 
Nice. You want to simulate it. Okay, so here you go. You ready? If you, th if you have an impactor that comes in uh, straight into a, a surface, it makes a circular crater. Right. If you send it at an angle, it will make an elongated crater. Okay? This will happen. So they're saying, no, wait a minute, let's send it in faster. Turns out there is a magic speed with which you can send in an asteroid and on collision, it will make a perfect circle no matter the angle it hits. No matter the angle it hits. Correct. And that and speed, okay? This is, this is what you, okay, you ready? Let me guess, let me guess. 88 miles per hour. <laughs> Precisely. The same speed that it takes to propel you into the future. <laughs> because the flux capacitor is the, flux the capacitor. only. Flux <laughs> capacitor. Okay, 89 miles per hour. All right, so here's the so here's what's going on. Let's let's take a rock, and you can ask why does the rock sort of hang together. Right? Why isn't it just decomposed into sand? Well, because there are molecules that are attached. All right? It's molecularly attached within itself. Right. Right? These are electromagnetic forces. You can, we know what they are. Okay. Um, all right. You can add up how much energy is contained in all of these molecular bonds. Okay. And you can write down that number. And you say, this rock is held together by this much energy. You can do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, some rocks are held together with not much energy. Like if you take a sort of a semi, a kind of solidy thing. At like a, a beach, snowball. When, or, or, so I was going to get to that in a minute. Right. Oh, you okay. Get like a sand ball, right? Right. That if you just sort of punch it, the whole thing just crumbles back into sand. But it holds its shape it held just, together. just for a little while. Not much energy is holding that together. Snowball, another example. <clears throat> Not much energy is holding, unless you like really pack it in. And what you're yeah. doing is you're melting the snow and right. have it refreeze and that holds it up better. We had, a your, whole, what, we had a whole explainer on the freezing and melting of right. ice. So but what you're really doing is saying to the other person you're having a snowball fight with, I hate you. I hate you even more. Even more. Because <laughs> this is going to be a nice little ice ball you're about <laughs> to get ball. hit in the face with. So that held, and if it's held together only loosely, you can't even throw it without the thing flying apart. Okay? Right. So you can write down how much energy that is. C calculate it and write it down. Now, move the object through space or through the air. There's a kinetic energy it has, and this is the energy of motion. It's called kinetic energy. There's a formula. It's one half times the mass of the object times the velocity squared. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, the moment the kinetic energy that the object has exceeds the binding energy of the molecules. Right. You have to ask, if, well, if the thing was going at that speed, and then after it hits, it's going at zero speed, then what happened to all that kinetic energy? It got pumped back into the object. Right. But that's more energy than what is holding the object together in the first place. Right. So if you have more mm. kinetic energy than the binding energy of the thing that has the kinetic energy, it's going to explode. On impact, it explodes. Precisely. Wow. So we call these high-speed collisions. And it's not just, oh, because it's going fast. No, it is higher speed than the energy that's holding it together. So on impact, it's an explosion. And explosions happen in all directions. Now, is that because the moon has no atmosphere? Because that doesn't happen on Earth. So, so, so let's, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Let me get to that. Just imagine this, the air is not a thing. Just okay. Just imagine about the air is not a thing. Energy. Just talking about the energy. Thing. Okay. And the, okay. Okay. All right. So, so there you have it. That's the entire reason. So, in fact, all the craters on the moon, the damn near all the craters on them, there might be one or two that were volcanic. All the rest are asteroids, uh, meteors coming in at whatever angle they choose. Doesn't make a difference. That doesn't make a difference. They and, and all the, explode on impact. They explode on impact because they are coming in at, at, at what we call a high-speed collision. 
Now, now, let's look at snowballs. You should try this, okay? Um, when you throw a snowball at a wall, uh, winter's coming up, okay? Right. We're recording this in November. So you throw it at a wall. When it hits the wall, it doesn't stay as a snowball. No, it explodes. It, it, it basically pops. It goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. And try Except for this. one little white dot that's yeah, stuck little white to the dot wall. Stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done this before. Yeah, okay. yeah. This to all our Hawaii friends and other friends who, who, who don't have snowball fights. So try throwing it at different angles when winter comes. You will see that every time it explodes on impact, and you see the scatter all around it in equal directions. That's because even at your speed, okay, you're not going hypersonic speeds. It's just the speed that you throw it. That's more kinetic energy than is the binding energy of the snowball. Right. So that's why a high-speed collision, you have to ask what's binding the object and how much energy does it have in, of motion. And it's the, the, the relationship of those two numbers that will tell you if it's a high-speed collision. So a snowball on someone's chest exploding is a high-speed collision. Nice. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. And so now let's, let's just hope, though, that you never throw a snowball hard enough to leave a crater in somebody. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a problem at that point. <laughs> that would be more energy then is necessary to explode the, the, the snowball at the other side. But correct. Right. Yeah, you don't want to be leaving craters. And, all right, so let's get back to the atmosphere. Very important and interesting question, okay? Yeah. So now an asteroid comes and it sees the atmosphere. Right. Well, the atmosphere is going to slow it down a bit, isn't it? Okay, it's going to slow it down. If it slows it down enough so that its kinetic energy is less than the energy that binds it together, it will survive on impact. Right. We do find uh, meteorites. We add the ITE after you, it's on the ground. Meteor coming through the air, uh, mm -hmm. meteorite. We find there are meteorites that make it to the ground. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We, right. We have them. They're there. It's okay. The they slowed down put, enough. Put the brakes on them. Put the brakes on them, and they did not completely explode. Now, in the explosion, there could be some pieces that remain intact just in the explosion. So in Meteor Crater, Arizona, which used to be called Barringer Crater, and, pe and geologists said, this has got to be volcanic because it's a perfect circle, but there's no volcanic activity in Arizona. Right. right. There's, just no, there's no volcano for miles. All right. So that was a conundrum. When we figured it out, it got renamed Meteor Crater. Wow. And those, those computer simulations were, were abundant in the early 70s when we were able to program computers in the science laboratories. So uh, that that asteroid they were saying well where is the asteroid if an asteroid did it let's dig and find the big asteroid all right and so they dug and they didn't find anything because they didn't know that the sucker blew up okay and so, per so a person bought that land a mining company bought that land on the expectation that they could mine the metals of the asteroid that must be buried deep in it and it was nowhere to 90 percent of it vaporized on impact. Yes, ah. there, there are pieces that are scattered around, and, and those pieces are now in collections. We have some at the museum. But most of it is gone wow. for that reason. And that's why craters are round. There you go. Okay. Another explainer. You know, we keep doing this. We'll run out of stuff to explain. That's like reaching the end of the internet, which I... <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> well, the end of Netflix movies, right? Right. It's just, <laughs> so the next film. <laughs> does not happen. That's the, that, that'll be the end of the world when that happens. <laughs> All right, Chuck, we got to go. Thanks for having me. All right. Out. Always a pleasure. At Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up. <laughs>